Hi everyone, my name is Graham Moore. I'm the head of tokenization at Polymath and today we'll be talking about the who, what, where, why, when, and how of the Polymesh mainnet launch and we'll get a chance to see a demo of what that'll look like. When mainnet, that's the question everyone always asks, but I think more importantly is the question, why mainnet? Why did we decide to build our own blockchain? You know, we had a lot of success early on. We created the first self-serve product on Ethereum to create and manage security tokens. 225 tokens have been created from that. We spearheaded ERC-1400, which is the most widely used security token standard in the world. Consensus has their own implementation. The government of Norway has experimented with it. And soon, uh, we're hoping a top 10 global bank uh, is going to announce what they've done with ERC-1400. And so, again, you know, why did we start building our own blockchain? And I think a lot of it is because Ethereum was never built for security tokens. As we started talking to more and more large financial institutions, we kept hearing the same five issues over and over again. Governance, identity, confidentiality, compliance, and settlement. And so back in 2019, we announced that we would start building our own blockchain called Polymesh, built specifically purpose-built for security tokens. And so a few things had to get done before we finalized that. Uh, the formation of the Polymesh Association, which is a Swiss not-for-profit member-based association. So it provides resources to support the advancement and adoption of a diverse Polymesh community. Polymath is one member of many, and it controls 250 million PolyX to achieve its goals. Another thing was getting node operators to operate the chain. So 14 of those node operators will be starting. A few of those names we can mention today are Intoro, Oasis Pro Markets, Digivault, the Gibraltar Stock Exchange, Bloxin, and Etana Custody. So those are geographically distributed all around the world, North America, South America, Europe, and Australia. And finally, we wanted to have a successful incentivized testnet. So we actually had over 4,300 unique users onboarding to the chain. So onboarding, meaning actually passing a KYC process, which is very unique to Polymesh, not most blockchains do that. Uh, and a big shout out to F. O'Brien and the rest of the Polymesh community for helping us test, squash bugs, uh, and make Polymesh the best it can be. Finally, before launch, uh, we'll have the successful completion of two independent code audits. And so again, very important in terms of security and having the best blockchain possible once you launch. A question we get asked a lot, what is PolyX? Uh, well, you can take a Poly token, which exists as an ERC-20 token on Ethereum today, and you can upgrade that one-to-one -one for PolyX. So that upgraded bridge will be available at mainnet launch for at least one year. There will be no new PolyX supply other than staking rewards on the proof of stake blockchain. And then probably the biggest news other than uh, when is mainnet is that PolyX is a FINMA regulated utility token. So FINMA is the financial regulator in Switzerland and based on their regulatory framework, tokens are either asset tokens or securities, payment tokens or utility tokens. And so based on their current opinion, PolyX is a utility token. So that's really big in terms of what the future of regulation will look like and how blockchains can continue to exist in beneficial and friendly regulatory frameworks. Uh, when will uh, Polymesh Mainnet go live? Polymesh Mainnet is expected to launch on October 13th, 2021. So in just a few weeks from now, we'll be able to have users onboarding onto the chain, staking to secure the chain, earning rewards, creating security tokens, managing security tokens, investing in security tokens, and uh, engaging in governance on the chain as well. And so that's when Mainnet uh, is scheduled to go live, but what is mainnet going to look like? You know, what does a demo of Polymesh look like? How is this different from other chains? How can people create and manage security tokens, stake, engage in governance, etc.? So let's take a look at that. First, we'll head over to the bridge. So this is, this is the upgrade bridge where you can take an ERC-20 token as Poly, and you can upgrade Poly to PolyX on the Polymesh blockchain. And so I used my MetaMask wallet for this. Uh, you can see I'm gonna upgrade 10,000 Poly you can see there's a 30,000 uh, poly limit there. That's just on testnet. That limit will not exist on mainnet. I'm confirming this transaction here with MetaMask. So I'm locking the poly on the Ethereum side of things and then uh, sped up for TV for this presentation. And we'll see that this transaction does not take very long. Uh, and now I have my PolyX on PolyMesh. And so I've upgraded my poly to PolyX. Now that I have PolyX, I wanna go ahead and create a security token. So let's call this security token the mainnet token or MNT uh, for its ticker symbol. I'm signing a transaction here. You can see the network fee is 0.1 PolyX. So the cost of this transaction to reserve a ticker symbol is orders of magnitude different between what you would experience on Ethereum and what we would experience on Polymesh. And so we, we've taken a very 
thoughtful approach to how this architecture should work so that it's much more scalable and that it's much more future proof. Um, and so I'm configuring my security token here. I want it to be divisible. Uh, I could input a reference uh, such as my private placement memorandum, anything like that uh, into the security token itself. And so I've created my security token here. I can easily transfer ownership of that security token. So maybe to my transfer agent or broker dealer or custodian that I'm working with. And now here I want to set up the compliance rules of my security token. And the rules I want to set up are that the only individuals or entities that can hold my token, they must be KYC verified. They must be either an accredited, accredited, an affiliate or exempt investor, and they must be from the US. And I also want to enforce buy lockups and sell lockups. So once I uh, create this rule and I enforce it with the token, that applies to all potential users of the token. Here I'm adding an approved attestation provider. So I'm going to add myself but I could add a KYC provider, a transfer agent, a custodian, an exchange, et cetera, et cetera. And so approved attestation providers can make attestations about potential holders of the token. And so here, now that I am an approved attestation provider, I'm gonna make one about 0xA67, let's call her Alice. And so Alice uh, is under a buy lockup, but that actually expired a couple days ago. Uh, she's under a sell lockup for about a year. She needs to refresh her KYC information in a few months. I uh, will say that Alex, Alice is from uh, the United States and we'll also say she's accredited. And so based on this attestation that an approved attestation provider is making about Alice, Alice will be able to hold MN MNT tokens. However, if any of this information did not fit with the compliance rules that we created for MNT, Alice would not be able to hold security tokens. And so that's what enables holders to maintain compliance in the primary market, but also in the secondary market as time goes on using Polymesh. Here I've minted 1,000 MNT tokens, and I want to distribute 250 of those tokens to Alice. So I'll call this distribution event Q3. I'll distribute to a single account, but I could distribute it to multiple, 50 at a time using a CSV file, or even more if I wrote a script that plugged into the Polymesh SDK. Here I'll just sign a transaction to generate a proof, and then we'll see that that transaction uh, is pending. And so an important point here, if you see the waiting for receiver mark, so on Polymesh, we have what most financial institutions would call actual settlement. And what I mean by that, we'll take a look at Alice's point of view here. Alice sees there's an incoming transfer of 250 tokens. She actually has to go and accept that transfer. So on Polymesh, we have the concept where sender must affirm settlement instructions and receiver must also affirm settlement instructions. That does not exist on any of the other public blockchains that exist today. If I find out your Ethereum address, for example, I can send you any tokens I want and you do not have to affirm settlement instructions. They show up in your wallet and you have those tokens. You might not have wanted them. They might be from an entity you're not able to deal with. Um, they might uh, involve you in tax implications that you don't want. And so uh, the settlement aspect of Polymesh is one thing that really differentiates it from a lot of these other general purpose blockchains. So here, Alice has created a portfolio. She's called it her US Common Equity Portfolio, and she's moved the mainnet tokens into there. So she can actually now designate control of those tokens to someone like a custodian um, or a broker dealer or an investment advisor while she maintains be uh, ultimate beneficial ownership. Alice is done investing, uh, and so she's now ready to stake some PolyX to earn rewards on Polymesh and to help secure the chain. So she can pick any one of these operators here that she wants to stake on or she can just say, you know what, I want to stake on all the operators. And her amount of stake will be split between the operators based on an algorithm that provides the most security possible to the Polymesh chain. So here she's just going to sign that transaction. Again, very low network fee to do so. And she can check out her projected daily rewards, weekly rewards, and monthly rewards. And uh, a thing we get asked a lot, well, how do I build on Polymesh? And so here we have uh, the Polymesh SDK. So all the UIs that you saw, we built those on top of the Polymesh SDK. So if you wanna build your own token studio, your own staking UI, your own mechanism for a custodian or a transfer agent, you can easily do that on top of the Polymesh SDK without necessarily having to know everything about how a blockchain works. And here's how to get in touch with me. Uh, you see my email there, also on Twitter, and how to follow along with uh, all things coming up for the Polymesh launch. And so thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope you're all very excited for the mainnet launch of Polymesh, the blockchain purpose-built for security tokens. Thanks.